Richard M. Nixon is one of those figures from history who's been so thoroughly dunked upon by pop culture, it's hard to know as a casual observer of history what he was actually like as a man. As it turns out, Nixon was an awkward dork who quite literally did not know how to relax. So yeah, there is different types of media that do make fun of Richard Nixon. Yeah, he is one of the most caricatured and satirised figures in political history to the point where, as I mentioned in the introduction, it's almost impossible as a casual observer of just history as a whole to like, just imagine what he was like as a man. Because when I think Richard Nixon, I think Nixon's head from Futurama. And I'm going to guess that there's a sizable percentage of our audience watching this at home right now who have the same image of Richard Nixon in their head. And that to me is fascinating. This guy was the president, the executive, the most powerful man on the planet. And the lasting image pop culture has of him is Aroo! And like the jaw wobble. Oh, this is sneaky. I feel a jaw movement coming on. Arroo! And for all I know, he could have made that noise because the only depictions I've seen of him in media are exaggerated to the point of caricature. And I don't think anything sums up how sad a legacy Richard Nixon has left behind in regards to his public image is the fact that like, one of the lasting contributions he's made to pop culture um, is his own middle name, uh, which Simpsons creator Matt Groening once described as the most unfortunate name I could ever think of a child having, and as a result gave that name to one of the series' most common subjects of ridicule, Milhouse Van Houten. So his middle name was Milhouse? Yes, Richard Milhouse Nixon. And the thing is, the name Milhouse immediately conjures up the image of Milhouse from The Simpsons and just how just utterly pathetic a character he is. Like, you know, he's a, he's a good character, he's very funny, he has a lot of memorable lines and moments, but the character is fucking pathetic and that's Richard Nixon's lasting contribution to pop culture as a whole, it's that character's name. And you know what, Nisha? Me and you often talk about Simpsons, let's do it again. What's your favourite Milhouse moment? It's when Lisa's got a crush on Nelson <laughs> and uh, she asks... <laughs> Yeah. She asked Milhouse to give him a note in class. <laughs> so he does, he passes it on. Uh, Nelson opens the note and it says, guess who really likes you or something <laughs> like that. And he just wave. looks at Milhouse waving the next scene. is He's in a stretcher. Just smash cartoon <laughs> on the stretcher. Oh, it's so good. Oh, there are just so many. Just iconic, legendary Millhouse moments, and they're all fucking kind of like, you know, it's the, oh, I don't want to wear these flood pants, and it's just, oh, everything's coming up Millhouse. It's like, yeah, you go Millhouse, it's great. Hey, they're working. Everything's coming up Millhouse. Some of the lines as well, just, they're throwaway lines in the show where they've taken on a new meaning with the age of memes. And like one of them is just like, oh, here's where I go to cry, and Bart's like, cool. How'd you find it? This is where I come to cry. Cool. This is where I go to... And that character was directly inspired by Richard Nixon. That is so, like, baffled. He was the president. The president, and this is the lasting contribution he's made to culture as a whole. I'll say, oh, you know, he's contributed to politics. That's a whole other kettle of fish. But culture, this is how he's remembered. It's either Milhouse, the character, or a caricature of himself in Futurama, who's a fucking monster. Okay, so what was Nixon actually like as a man? Here's the thing, it's really difficult to know, because even when he was the president, he was the frequent subject of ridicule by the press, because he was just so painfully awkward, and seemingly unable to do anything like a normal person would. Well, this is fact being, so I'm assuming you've got one or two examples. I do, yes. And let's start with something I think everybody like knows and like you know has an opinion on. Breakfast. What do you have for breakfast, Nisha? some healthy cereal mm -hmm. or toast. Yeah, so cereal or toast, maybe a glass of water, a coffee, a cup of tea, something like that. Uh, myself, I'll normally have like a coffee uh, or a protein shake if I happen to go to the gym that morning, maybe a piece of fruit. Sometimes I'll have a pastry with my girlfriend, you know, if we're feeling like, especially raunchy that morning in regards to like, you know, our food choices. And that's the thing, like, I'm guessing 99% of people who answer that question would give an answer that's reasonably similar. Like, it's like, you know, some kind of cereal food. And even when people have like, you know, an answer that's outside of the norm, 
it's normally not something that's that weird, is it? It's like, I've met people who for their breakfast will have like, oh, sometimes they'll have like a steak. Like, just they'll have like a full meal for their breakfast. And while that's a little bit weird, I, I kind of get it. Maybe they work nights, maybe they're, you know, they just adhere very strictly to like, you know, the old adage of eat breakfast like a king, dinner like a prince, supper like a pauper. But Richard Nixon couldn't even eat breakfast like a normal person. Because do you want to know, Nisha, what Richard Nixon's favorite breakfast was? Go on. Cottage cheese with ketchup on it. No. Yeah. No. And I didn't think there was a wrong answer to the question, what do you eat for breakfast, until I researched this. Because even the answer, nothing, is less weird than that. Like, I've met people who have a full meal for their breakfast, and that's less weird than cottage cheese with ketchup on it. Cottage cheese on its own, I can kind of understand. Because on like, days I go to the gym, I'll have like, you know, something high protein, like a protein shake. Or sometimes I will just have like cottage cheese. I'll have like some cottage cheese and like, you know, some cucumber, some like some spinach, something like, you know, vitamins and minerals. But like, the fact to put ketchup on it. Ketchup is the president. And it's so funny because he was just such a painfully awkward man that there was almost nothing about him that wasn't just so overwhelmingly, distractingly weird. And that brings us to the title of today's video. This article is basically about him wearing a suit to the beach. Yes, like a fucking loser. Uh, because people don't know, we change the title on these videos sometimes from what the original article is. And the original article, which I have in front of me now, is simply titled, Richard Nixon wore a tie to the beach like a fucking loser. So let's supply a little context for that, shall we? And the context is that Richard Nixon was a almost comically uptight man who dressed formally in almost every single situation he found himself in, to the point even his staff found it weird. You know, the staff that worked at the, like, the highest levels of government. Like this guy was followed around by the Secret Service, a group of men and women who have to wear suit and tie every minute of the day, and even they thought his formality was excessive. We've discussed what we wear on the daily before. Yeah. Like you said, you like to get dressed up every day, but not dressed wear, up like, in Jesus that sense. Yeah. I, I never wear a suit and tie. I, I do sometimes to the office, like back when we were able to meet up in person, hopefully we'll be out soon. Because sometimes it just feels nice to walk into my office wearing a suit, but it's not something I did every single day. Richard Nixon did, and it is the case that um, uh, like presidents and just you know like high-ranking political figures and even celebrities to an extent, like they're held to just ridiculously high standards. Um, like you know, in this regard, like there's the famous or infamous, I should say, tan suit moment um, during Obama's presidency. Are you familiar with that, Nisha? If you don't remember, just like just type in now Obama tan suit and just describe what you see on the screen. Just Obama in a tan suit. Yeah, and it looks pretty good, doesn't it? It's pretty. Yeah. It's a really well fitted suit. You know, he's rocking that look. Uh, that was front page news. Oh, yes, it's here. Blasted for wearing tan suit. Yes. Why? Because it's not presidential. I'd argue anything the president wears while carrying out his duties as president is presidential, but um, Fox News and, like, you know, others of their ilk disagreed. And there is literally a Wikipedia page about him wearing that suit. Most of it is just people are weird fuddy duddies about it. I think it was um, during the last presidential election cycle, I think Andrew Yang, a presidential hopeful, didn't wear a tie during a debate, and he was criticised for that. It's like, it's not presidential, you're not wearing a tie. So you do realise, like, the president right now spends 70% of his time at the golf course, right? <laughs> you do realise that, right? Anyway, to bring it back to Nixon, as hard as it's going to believe, given like you know how thoroughly he's been dunked on by pop culture since, and just how negative his um, reputation is today, he was a somewhat popular figure um, when he was president, at least before the Watergate scandal. You know, like he was the president, he had to win the election. But one of the things that's really funny about that is, like his aides and people who worked on his campaigns, like it's so difficult to sell him because he doesn't do anything normally. It's really awkward. <laughs> and that's what resulted in the photo that inspired today's article of him walking on the beach in like formal slacks and a tie like a fucking weirdo. <laughs> because that was supposed to be like a publicity shot to like, you know, sell him as a man of the people. And it's like, he's on the beach wearing formal attire. That's the most unsettling weird thing I've ever seen. And I know in the photo behind me, Nixon's not wearing a tie, and that's because this was a publicity shot. It was a stage photo shoot to make him look more approachable, more like, you know, a man of the people. Um, in his free time, when he walked on the beach near his, like, retirement home, I think he was, he would wear a full suit and tie. The fuck are you doing? <laughs> if I saw someone on the, on the beach wearing a suit and tie, like, that is a serial killer. That's a serial killer. There's no, like, there's no other explanation for why they're wearing this outfit. 
And I don't want to get misconstrued here. I'm not saying that people can't wear what they want and what they feel comfortable in. I'm just saying that the choice to wear a full three-piece suit on the beach is very, very weird. And as mentioned, Richard Nixon basically wore that outfit his entire life, including when he ate his evening meals alone. And there are reports from his aides and people who worked with him during his presidency, like you'd see him taking his evening meal alone under a single light in a three-piece suit. And it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I can't think of a more depressing image than that of like man eating alone wearing suit. You'd only be sad if he was eating McDonald's. And for anyone curious, Richard Nixon did address this during his lifetime because he was asked point blank, why do you always wear a suit? Because like, even when he was in uh, like his office, writing his memoirs after he was president, he still wore a coat. Because that's even, that's the thing that's weird to me is like he wore a coat indoors. So he'd wear a suit and then a coat on top of the suit. And he was asked like, why are you wearing a coat? You're in your office. And he says, oh, I, I, I just feel more comfortable wearing a coat. I'd catch a cold if I didn't wear one. And it's like, but... You're the, but, you could just turn the heat up if you're cold. It's <laughs> your room. You don't have to wear a coat. I don't get it. I just I think, think, like, when you wear a coat indoors, your grandparents would say, you'll take your coat off, otherwise you won't feel the benefit when you go outside. And clearly Richard Nixon did not have northern grandparents. That much we know. 